Come in. Hello. Good afternoon, Tim. My name is Mary, and I am a student nurse with CVTC Technical College. May I have your full name, first name, and date of birth, please? Tim Pametlo, 71064. Okay. Looks, looking good. It matches my chart here. Okay. Do you have any allergies, Tim, that nope. you're aware of? Okay, good. Would you prefer me to call you Tim or, or something else? Tim. Okay, that's what we'll do then. All right, so Tim, I am here because your physician has ordered us to put in what we call a indwelling or Foley catheter. Um, this is a tube that will help you um, drain the urine that you have in your bladder right now. Um, Cause I know you're becoming very uncomfortable because of your bladder being so full. And you know, we've tried to we try to assist you with that by other means, you know, but it, it hasn't worked. So the provider does want you to have what we call an indwelling catheter. Okay. Um, have you ever had one of those before? No. No. Okay. And I'll just, I'll just explain a little bit of what I'm doing the whole time. So the tube does actually go right into your um, urinary um, opening and it does feel a little uncomfortable as I'm putting the tube in. But we'll be helping you through that, you know, making sure you take deep breaths and um, that kind of helps the process along. So it's not as dis um, not as uncomfortable as, you know, it could be. So there's a few questions I have to ask you before I begin. Uh, first of all, do you have any allergies to like shellfish or iodine? No. Okay, good. Um, the other thing is, have you had any like hip surgeries that would interfere with me manipulating and moving your legs? Good. How about knee surgeries? No. Okay, good. Um, yeah, because we do have to position your legs, you know, we have to bend them. So we want to make sure you're able to do that. And um, if I need, I can get um, someone to help us. All right. So at this point, do you have any questions for me right off the bat? Nope. Okay, great. Now, um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to clean um, the area down there just because we want it as clean as possible. Because since we are putting a tube inside your body, we don't want any um, bacteria to get in there where, we, you know, where it could cause some infection. So we want to make sure that we clean the area very good first. So at this point, I would do peri care on the patient. And that would mean, um, obviously, Hand sanitize, uh, sanitize my hands and then put on gloves and perform hygiene as per policy of the facility. Okay, all right, so now we're gonna begin the procedure of actually putting the Foley catheter in. We've, we've done our peri care and we've explained to the patient and the patient doesn't have any questions at this time. I do have another um, RN in here with me and my charge nurse and she's going to help assist me in um, positioning the patient and holding the patient while we put the catheter in since that is best practice to have two patient, two people in there while we're doing this. Um, that does help prevent um, introducing bacteria and causing um, a catheter associated urinary tract infection while the patient is hospitalized. All right, so Tim, what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna pull up your, your sheets and expose, well, let's see, we can, yeah, we're gonna need your legs exposed. So I'm gonna pull up from this area so that your chest is still covered. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and um, when I'm ready, we'll um, expose your area and then we're gonna start putting the catheter in. I'm just gonna open up the fully catheter kit and fully catheter kits may look a little different than this one where you are working. Um, some of them come more in a elongated tray. This one is more square, but it's, they all have the same uh, uh, material inside. So typically, if you have any type of strength, you should be able to open this. All right, so this outer um, package is going to be used as our uh, waste so we're just gonna fold this over. And I fold it over because if you don't, you're gonna have a chance of contaminating your sterile field. So I fold it over nicely and I just set it at the end of the bed so that I have a clear shot when I put my dirty supplies in there. Um, this you don't necessarily need, but if you wanna read that, you can. We have a 14 French, which is a very common catheter size. All right. Just gonna wash my hands before I open the sterile field. 
All right, so when you are opening a sterile field, um, you wanna make sure that you always open outer flap away from you first. And then you wanna go ahead and just touch the very outside because you don't wanna touch the inside because then it'll become contaminated. All right, so now you can, this is your sterile field. So you don't want anything to touch the inside of that. You've got the one inch boundary that can be contaminated, but that's it. Now, there's a couple things that are on top usually. This is um, kind of your, your pad that goes underneath the patient and that's why I'll have my assistant help me. But you wanna make sure that you're just grabbing kind of the outer edges on this. Um, again, like that one inch border for sure to make sure that it's, all right, and then there are two sides to this. There's a shiny side, which is going to go on the bottom, and the dull side is gonna go on the top. All right, so my assistant's gonna kind of lift up the one leg there while I put this under. All right, very good, so we'll just let that sit there. All right, so that's considered sterile in the mi middle there. And then I have my sterile gloves, and I'm gonna put those to the side, and I'll put those on in a little bit. And then we also have what we call a fenestrated drape, which I'm gonna place, because he is a male, I'm gonna use it because it helps just to keep the area contained. All right, I'm just gonna lay that down here like this. All right, and once I, okay, so there we go, all right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I am a person that likes to put my um, all my supplies right near me there. Um, that will avoid me from turning constantly and um, stepping away from my sterile field or looking away from my sterile field. So I just grab underneath because underneath is not going to be sterile anyway. And I just lay this down on the bed like that. All right. So now everything there is sterile and my assistant's gonna help me, you know, make sure the patient isn't going to move to get on that sterile field. Now I can go ahead and put on my sterile gloves. So always hand hygiene before you put gloves on and after you remove them. Okay, so again, uh, you open these up, tells you right where the thumbs are, and you, you're gonna wanna go ahead and open the outer flap first, just like we did with the sterile package. We're gonna do this again like this. And it sort of looks like a lapel. You're gonna pull it out and just kind of give it a little tighten there. And you're gonna put on your dominant hand first, okay? So my dominant hand is my right hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the inside of the cuff of the glove because that's not gonna stay sterile. Put my four fingers together find my thumb and put those on. So I can still touch this because it's gonna go against my skin, but this hand is sterile. So with this one, I do the opposite. I grab on the outside of the glove, get my four fingers in first, and I pull this up. And that kind of ripped. Um, don't be too alarmed. You can still kind of touch the top of that. If you need to put new gloves on, just go ahead, take these off, put new ones on. These aren't always made the greatest. It's always a good idea of bringing an extra pair of gloves in with you, uh, particularly if they don't fit you or something or they rip. All right, so this is still sterile, but I'm just gonna get it out of the way. All right, so now I'm gonna concentrate mainly on my sterile field here and keeping everything sterile. Now this is a urinary specimen cup. Um, I'm not gonna particularly need that right now. So I'm just gonna put that away from me over there. Um, but I am gonna use the rest of this. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna move this over here like that, okay? And I'm gonna get everything ready. So I have here um, just sterile water. That's what's going to blow up my balloon once I get inside the bladder. So this can go on right away. You just wanna get everything ready first before you start cleaning the patient and start actually um, performing the procedure. So you're gonna go ahead and put this on the balloon port and you'll know it's the balloon port because it gives us the size, plus it tells you how much, how many cc's can go in this balloon, which is 10 cc's, that's pretty standard. All right, so we have that there. Now the next thing we're gonna do is, I don't know if you guys can see this very well. I can try to move this a little bit. This is our lubricant. It usually comes in a package or a syringe. What I'm gonna do with that is I'm just gonna squirt it in here in the tray. 
so that when I'm ready I can um, do all that. Next I'm going to take the wrapper off of my actual Foley catheter. There is perforations in here so you can easily open it. Word of advice, just keep everything contained so you're not flying, flying it all over the place because that way you decrease the risk of contaminating it. All right, so just kind of curl it up in your hand a little bit. Okay, and we're gonna set that right in our tray like that so it's ready to go. And I'm still sterile, just leave that there. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna do is get my betadine or iodine ready because I'm gonna clean, cleanse the site, the meatus. So um, it's good to kind of know how this comes out because it comes out very rapidly and sometimes when you've not opened one before, you kind of get it all over. So um, it's good to open one in practice. All right, so at this point, I am gonna just assess and see if I am ready to put this in. I've got everything set up because the minute I use this hand, I'm gonna contaminate it and this hand is gonna stay sterile. So I'm ready to go. I have my cleaning agent. I've got my catheter in there. I've got my balloon. Um, fluid on there so when I get in I'm ready to put the fluid in the balloon. All right, so Tim, it's going to be a little cold but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, start putting that catheter in, okay? So I'm just going to grab here. So a word of advice, if they have foreskin, you have to push the foreskin back so that you can actually visualize the um, meatus and hopefully when you did peri care you've cleaned under there and everything but if they have foreskin, pull that back and then make sure when you're done to put it back down because um, that can cause problems for the patient. If you don't, they can start to get swelling and stuff in there. All right, Tim, so I'm gonna go ahead and start to cleanse the area because remember we wanna make sure this is very clean before we put that catheter in. Okay, this can be a little cool. All right, so you wanna go right over the opening and you kinda just push down a little bit and do a circular motion. And you do try to get all the way down um, down to the foreskin or down to the bottom of the glands as, as much as you can. This is important. So you do not want to go over your sterile field. You want to keep your arm away from the sterile field. You don't want to cross over your sterile field. So we're going to do this again, same motion. And this isn't a real patient, so it's kind of hard to do this, but um, you could even go farther down with your cleaning if you wanted to. All right, and then we're going to do one more. I'm kind of Push in there, cleanse all the way around. And now we're done, so I can discard that whole thing. Okay, so remember this hand is still um, sterile. All right, so I'm just gonna bring this over. This is all still sterile. I've got a lot of lubricant on there. You wanna do about at least five to six inches of lubricant. And then I'm gonna have Tim take a couple of deep breaths in and out. And then when I'm ready to go, I'm gonna tell you to exhale, okay? Breathe out. So in and out. Okay, good. Now I just want you to blow out. Good, here we go. You're gonna feel a little burn, little burn, little burn, little burn. Little burn. Okay, so at this point I get urine. And once I get urine, I'm going to advance it another inch or so. Okay, so once I do that, I should be in the neck of the bladder. So I'm gonna go ahead and inject my um, balloon fluid. Hands are a little slippery here. And you can see that, like I said, it's not a real patient. So sometimes if you did meet resistance, like I am when I'm blowing up the balloon, you can pull back a little bit and then keep trying to advance with the fluid. So we're having a little hard time. Okay, balloon popped. Okay, so let's just, we took that off and then you just wanna pull back a little bit to make sure it is in the bladder. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do, take this all off. It gets to be kind of messy. All right, there we go. All right, okay. I am just gonna go ahead and quick remove my dirty gloves. How you doing, Tim? Good. Doing okay? All right, we're almost done here. All right, all right. 
Kim, could you please hand me a couple pair of gloves there? Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, so we're just gonna get you cleaned up here. Um, we might have some peri pads maybe, or our peri cleanse or no, but we'll do that. We'll get you all cleaned up. All right, cause that betadine kinda likes to stay on there a little bit. All right, all right. sorry, this is a little cold. I'm just gonna clean this off here. And um, you'll have to follow your po uh, facility's policy on doing catheter peri care um, as directed. All right, so now that we have our catheter in, I'm just gonna show you how we attach that. All right. No. There we go. Sometimes you get a mess, but won't be the first time. All right, so when we attach our urine bag, again, make sure that it is um, coiled freely. And a lot of times there are stat locks that you can, you, you'll, you'll see at the hospitals. Here is a kind of a Velcro stat lock for your tubing. That just avoids the catheter from being tugged at and possibly coming out. So this is a, a primary or primitive, I should say, type of um, fastener. So Tim, I'm just gonna go around your leg with this. And it's, it's Velcro, but oh, let's see here. I think I have to go like this with this one. All right. So then with these, um, you would wanna make sure that your the little port here goes through there, and then that's attached on there. Okay, and then this tubing is kind of draped over here, and you want to put your bag on the bed frame. Don't ever put it on the rail because um, rails go up and down. Okay, all right, Tim. We are all done with this. You did great. So once it's in, it doesn't feel as bad, does it? <laughs> All right. Very good. So that's really going to help drain that bladder so that you start to feel more comfortable. And we're just going to kind of get that bladder to wake up a little bit so that you can start um, eventually voiding on your own. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for, for letting me do this. Um, I'm hoping it really helps. Do you have any questions for me at all, Tim? Nope. Okay, great. Well, I'll be back in to check on you in about um, half an hour to see how everything's going. And in the meantime, I'll give you your call light to see if, um, I'll give you your call light so that you can call me if you need anything. Um, bed is locked and low, and I'll get you your tray table here, and um, I'll be back.